order since there's four commissioners here. I know Gabe said he had a conflict and um, don't know if Carlton's coming. And I think Aaron was going to come, but maybe he's just running a little bit late. Um, do we need to review Zoom procedures? Mike? Uh, no, but I will say for folks that are talking, because we're on ORCA, to be heard on ORCA, you need to use the microphones. Okay. So that would be the one request as you're talking. So usually people move it away afterwards, but while you're talking, just make sure you're talking into the microphones. That way folks can hear you at home. Um, so that would be it for the Zoom procedures, because really we only have a couple of folks and both of them are familiar with Zoom, so. Okay. All right, would anyone like to move to approve the agenda? So moved. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, comments from the chair. I don't have any comments. I don't think we're just gonna get to this public input session. Um, and then the next session is general business. So if there's any other business from a member of the public who's that's not related to the public input session, um, can raise your hand on Zoom or in person. I'm sorry, so we would do that at that agenda item. Or no. <laughs> I didn't say that. If it's not real, if you're if you have other business besides the for the planning commission other than the public providing input. public input for the city plan, do you have other business? Okay. Yeah, make a comment or yeah, kind of related to the plan. Yeah, I would like. You if, if you could come up to the to the speak just that way the folks at home can hear you with the microphone like that yep as a resident of montpelier my name is zoe niederland and i would like to express support for making the montpelier high school more flood resilient by keeping it downtown in town in part so that we're building a generation of people who know who have options for their transportation and are familiar with using a range of options. I understand it would could be expensive to do a lot of resilience work all at once, but perhaps it could be phased. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. Um, and I imagine that's also a comment for the school board, probably, too. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it will. I mean, we will have utilities and facilities, so it would oh, okay. technically fall under facilities for when we get to that part. And also, we'll be writing a new resilience chapter. Originally, we were only going to have 11 chapters. And then after the flood, we've decided we're going to put in a 12th chapter called Resilience. So we'll also have that included in, in in that, or we'll talk about adding that as a recommendation in that. Oh, great. Yeah, thanks for reminding us of that. Okay. Um, if there's no other general business, then I think we can move on to Mike's presentation about the chapters. Um and then we'll take public input, but he's just going to do a little brief overview of the city plan and the chapters that we're discussing tonight. I should probably get my video on in case I end up up there, but I'm going to share my screen here. And we got Carlton getting in. And okay, so I'm just going to go quickly through um, our presentation here, and then we'll go through the, the three different chapters that we have. So tonight's uh, input session is, um, we'll get to it, this is the for the city plan, and we have both a virtual and a, a live option for tonight. And so the agenda, we're going to go through really quickly some of the background and history of how we got to where we're at and where everything is going to be going. So some basics of what is a city plan and why is it's important. 
Uh, we'll talk about the three chapters, and each of the chapters comes in two parts. So we'll explain all that, and we'll show you all the parts. And then we will um, have a discussion of our overall input process and then talk about what's going on for the rest of tonight. So if you're looking for the plan, where to find the plan, if you go to the main city website and you scroll down, there's a set of boxes that you can kind of move around. And the city plan connection is right in that box there. And if you were to click on that, you'd end up on a page that has this. It now actually has six um, tiles that you can click on. The tiles above take you to the what we call the storyboard. That is the discussion of the topics. And then down below, you have the links that go to the uh, implementation plans. So these are the uh, how we're going to implement the plans. So a little bit of the background in history. So for 50 years, this has been called the Montpelier Master Plan. And most recently, it was updated uh, in 2010. Uh, and then it was amended in 2017. So what we're working on today is a completely new format and content. We have kept very little from those, those two plans. And this process started in about 2016, and we developed goals and strategies. And we did those working with the various committees. So we worked with the Energy Committee on the Energy Plan and the Housing Committee on the Housing Plan and so forth. So that way, um, those were all developed using our committees who are represented of uh, volunteers uh, from the community. So it's a, it very much has been developed using our volunteers uh, who are familiar, most familiar with each of the topics. And this is a web-based plan format. So what we mean by that is rather than having this designed around a paper format, it's actually around uh, a website that you would go through these various storyboards. And there are separate chapters for each one of them. So there's an entire web page for uh, uh, housing, another one for energy, and tonight we'll be talking about the utilities and facilities, energy, and transportation. The new format, um, we also came up with a new format for our implementation plan. We want it to be much more strategic about our plan, so we have a new format which has aspirations, goals, and strategies, and with a goal of having it to be a more actionable plan. Uh, so we try not to have things like encouraging and supporting. We really want to know what we're going to do to actually accomplish the goal. So why is a city plan important or what is a city plan? Um, so plans are not required under state law. So we're not required under Vermont law to have a plan. But if we want to adopt or update zoning, you need to have one. If the city wants to participate in Act 250 or Section 248, which is a similar program, we would um, we would need to have a city plan in order to participate in those. It's a necessary requirement for any state and federal grants as well. So very important to have it. Um, but if we have a city plan, we have to have it be consistent with the state planning goals of 24 VSA 4302 has to be compatible with the regional plan, has to be compatible with other plans in the region, our neighboring communities, and it has to contain the 12 elements that are listed in state law. And so how can a plan be used? Uh, got a little bit into that in the previous slide, um, but it the city and town plans are a foundation document. Um, they can be a long-term guide, uh, it's a basis for decision-making and programs. Uh, it's an action plan. It can be a basis for municipal regulations. It can be a source of information. A lot of it just comes down to how we want to make it. As long as it contains those 12 elements and meets those requirements, um, you can make, make your plans be a lot of things or all of these things if you want to. So the planning commission's goals shrink that up a little bit. So um, when we started this process, what was, you know, what were we trying to do um, for this, for the storyboards, our goal is for the storyboards to give the public and decision makers the background on the topic. So that's the web page that we were talking about. What are the goals? And generally, what are we going to try to, uh, what are we going to try to do to achieve them? So your storyboards are really those 50,000 foot you know, I want to know more about housing in Montpelier. 
and you'd be able to go there and get some information. Um, what are the issues and what are we going to do about them? Uh, the strategies, uh, the second goal was for the strategies to detail the implementation steps, the actionable plan to achieve the aspirations and goals. So those were the much more specific, targeted, actionable steps. When We had a very, very detailed process of how we did it. Um, so that way, if you walk through from aspirations to goals to strategies, you'd have a, a very clear process of what it is we're trying to do and how we're going to get there. So our input process, what are we doing right now? Um, this is, uh, we have 11 chapters total. We're taking three of them at a time. And over the next four to six months, we're going to go through all 11 chapters. And as I mentioned um, earlier, we actually have added a 12th track chapter. So we will um, work our way through. We did the first three. Uh, historic housing and arts and culture. We're now in the second three right now for utilities and facilities, transportation and energy. We'll move on to the next six chapters. Um, when we wrap up the three here, we'll move on to the next three and then the final three. Uh, each will have three different inputs uh, opportunities plus comments online and through surveys. So we're trying to really have a lot of um, broad input where people have a number of opportunities to participate. Once complete, the Planning Commission will review all the comments and make revisions to develop a final public hearing draft. When a hearing draft is ready, then we will warn a public hearing process. And so this is just an input opportunity for everyone to get a chance to, to see what we're doing, comment on what we're doing well, comment on what we're, we're not doing well. So that way we want to be, when we get to the public hearing process, we're in a good position to go through and, and have support because we've heard the concerns and we've fixed them. Um, that's, that's our goal, at least on the planning commission. And so tonight's topics, transportation, energy, and utilities and facilities, uh, as we've mentioned a few times, it's three chapters and each of those chapters has two parts, has the storyboard, has the implementation plan. Um, all six pieces are on the website and we will go through them see if I can move that out of the way. Um, each storyboard is in the web-based format, has introduction, plan context, synergies, which is how this plan relates to other chapters, and then implementation summary and who's involved. And then we've talked about the implementation strategies, and we've talked about the strategies being actionable pieces. So... This is just a clip of the transportation. We will go through each one of these, but this gives an idea of the transportation storyboard on the left um, with the different contexts in there. And on the right, we've got the transportation storyboard and we'll go through or the implementation plan on the right. And it has aspirations at the top, then goals, and then a series of strategies on how we plan to accomplish those goals. And so for the rest of tonight, I'm going to leave the PowerPoint and then bring up each of the storyboards and strategies, and we can walk through them. And so what are we looking for? We're looking for your opinions, what you like and don't like about the various elements. Do you have specific comments about the content? Are there topics and strategies that are missing? Um, do you have questions that we can answer? Uh, and you can always email comments later if you choose as well. And maybe I should have done this at the start to make sure... I introduce myself. I'm Mike Miller, and I'm the planning director for the city. I'm not on the planning commission. I'm uh, a staff. I work for the city, but um, the folks here and online, some of them online, are the members of the planning commission. So I will jump off here and take any questions. If you want to jump back up there to ask your question. It's just a, a question of protocol. May I sit up there so that I could read? But, um, oh, yes. On the screen. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. We could have turned the you light up, too. Oh, I will have comment later, so I'll have yeah, to ask. Sure, of course. I'm that, gonna, I'm oh, that's better. Yeah, yeah, that might make it a little, little easier to read. But yes, you can also sit up there. Apologies. So let me get out of this. Stop share. And I'm going to jump back into...
Let's see if that is. Now I need to move this guy down and go to the website. There we go. While you're organizing, I just have a question. Um, are, are you planning to go over each of those areas uh, uh, to uh, it, it possibly inform our questions, or are you just taking questions now? I'm not clear. I, I could do either one. I was going to go through. This is this is the city's website, as I mentioned. And so, if somebody is looking for it, if you were to scroll down, you'd find the city plan 2024 page. And if you click on that. Yeah, I've been through that. Yeah, but for anyone who might not be able to find it, this is how you find the various pieces. These you are the a nice link in uh, Front Porch Forum today. Oh, good. Oh, good. And these are the three we're looking at. We'll take comments. If people have comments on these other ones, we'll take comments on them. But uh, tonight we're trying to focus on these three. So here are the three we were talking about. And down here we've got the three um, uh, implementation plans. So... And anyone can kind of jump in if they want to, but all of them are kind of in the same format. I'm looking for a new picture. We can update things as they made it. This was the picture that our consultants grabbed. I like the fact that it's a bus and encouraging public transit, but I thought we could find a we could find a sunnier day. And a, or a bicycle. <laughs> or a bicycle. There's we're, we're gonna we're gonna look to up to upgrade that picture, but that's one of the things we're working on. So each one of these chapters starts with an introduction, um, talking about big picture. What what are we? What are, what is transportation? Critical part of life: walking, biking, driving, finding parking, shipping goods, delivering packages, traveling to recreation to work. This plan moves the city towards environmental sustainability and improved quality of life by supporting walking, biking, public transit and personal vehicles as a viable form of transportation. And the, plan, the the transportation committee really had two primary goals that got built in, to cultivate a transportation system that treats all modes of transportation equally and prioritizes safety for all travelers, and two, to support a societal shift from non-fossil fuel to a non-fossil fuel future for transportation. Um, so those were really the big picture. That's what we want to try to accomplish um, throughout this plan. Um, and that was a big thing for the Transportation Committee to, to review all, to, to have all modes treated equally, because historically in the past, um, most things were very focused on the automobile and a small amount was dedicated to um, pedestrians and bicycles. And uh, we're trying to get a much more balanced capital plan and approach to making sure we're providing for all modes, making sure everything is safe and for all, all users. So the planning context is, this is where we get into a number of maps. This is a little technical. This is being developed in what's uh, called ArcGIS. These are storyboards. So a lot of it is based on very visual and maps. So the nice thing about using this program to, to make these web pages is the ability to do things graphically. So, you know, we've got a road network you can click on. And the map gives you the ability to move around if you'd like. It also gives you the ability to zoom in on certain things. So you can... In this case, it's giving you the the different ratings of the different the uh, the different road types. But we also have bus routes mapped out here. And again, you can um, zoom in and zoom out to to see the various routes and bicycle lanes. I won't go through all of them, but it gives a number of places where we can start going through and having conversations about understanding where we have bike routes and where we don't, and it might inform where we need to have additional ones. So that's 
the first one. And we note that we don't have any aviation facilities. Um, <laughs> as we mentioned, we have to meet state law. And so one of the requirements of the transportation plan under state law is you have to talk about the uh, aviation facilities that are in your community. So we at least have to have a statement that says we don't have them. So that way we can check the box and comply with state law. Um, we had two signature projects that we wanted to highlight. And the first one being uh, the new transit center at 61 Taylor Street um, located there. The second one is the, the shared use path that was finally completed after uh, a long process. And again, we've got everything mapped down. Hey, Carlton, you're welcome to sit up here. Uh, um, we also have uh, another map showing the complete streets. This goes through and really talks about, um, and we're going to get the actual GIS layer. This is just a picture of it. We have the actual GIS layer. We have got, we've just got to get it put into the storyboard. And that's really to help us have complete streets is to make sure that every street has all the pieces. Uh, is it safe for walkers? Is it safe for bikers? Is it safe for cars? And depending on the speed limits and the amount of traffic depends on whether you need a sidewalk on one side of your street or both sides of your street, or maybe no sidewalk at all is okay. Um, but we've got a plan that lays out for every single street in the city. And we make all of our repairs and we do all of our work using the CIP. This gets to how do we accomplish our goals? Well, it's all through the capital improvement plan. And that's how we do streets, sidewalks, all the pieces. Uh, in the future, we've got to do a better job of addressing things like stormwater, uh, transition to electric vehicles, um, better sidewalks. Then we get into a conversation on synergies. Uh, and again, this isn't all the chapters. So really the question with transportation, when you're talking about any of these chapters, one thing always comes up is like, boy, you know, this relates to other chapters. How can we talk about transportation without talking about energy? How can we talk about our energy plan without talking about transportation? Um, transportation is important for economic development. It's important for land use. Um, there's a lot of places that transportation overlaps with other chapters. So um, this kind of goes into that discussion of, you know, transportation sector contributes 40% of all the carbon emissions. So the transportation and energy chapters really have to be talked about together. Um, and we actually, you know, could have a number of other ones. People could make a case for other chapters also being closely related to transportation. We discussed three of them here, how it relates to it. I'm not going to read through all of it, but it does. That's what each one of those paragraphs does. And then the next section is we talk about our implementation summary. So these are the same aspirations and goals that exist in that implementation plan that I'll show you next. Um, so our aspiration, our transportation system meets the needs of all users through safety, efficiency, attractiveness, quality, cost effectiveness, and environmental responsibility. How will we meet that aspiration? By working through these sets of goals um, to improve Montpelier's transportation system through safe and efficient movement of people and goods, improve the appearance of Montpelier's transportation infrastructure and amenities for non-vehicular travelers, balance quality and cost effectiveness to improve accommodations on all streets and pathways with an emphasis on pedestrians and bicycles, and to improve the transportation infrastructure to mitigate stormwater emissions and heat island effects caused by roads and sidewalks. So those are the goals. And then the question is like, okay, how do we accomplish those goals? And then that's what this implementation summary goes through. And this is just summarizing what I will show you next. And this is just so for people who want to read through it, they could read through this, have a general understanding. And then eventually if you click this, it would take you there, but it doesn't actually work um, at this time because... We had to clip these out of the full website. There's an actual website that have all these. We had to clip them out to put them on the city's website. So some of the links, including this one, don't work. Um, then the last section is who's involved. So 
uh, if people are interested. How who, So who's involved in actually accomplishing all these goals? We have a transportation infrastructure committee and a complete streets committee. And so MTIC is tasked with certain things and the complete street is tasked with other things. And this all gets supported through a lot of work done by the Department of Public Works. And they oversee the projects and construction of all these pieces. And that was supposed to be fixed today and it didn't get fixed. So I will have to check back with them. Yes. I get, I have several, I guess, probably just comments and uh, mostly related to the specific implementations. I think of these, it, it, it's hard from a, a personal experience level to respond to the high level um, headings, I guess you would mm -hmm. say. Um, I like to be able to use my bicycle. I live up the hill and um, state and Maine is just harrowing. I will, I will do just anything to avoid that intersection. I'll, I'll cut down. I don't even remember the name of that little street that cuts one way down from East State to School Street and then go up Port Street and down. Is, it, is that Aiken? Yep. Governor Aiken. Yeah, yeah. Aiken. And, and across maybe either to Taylor Street or down or the rest of the way down State Street. But um, uh, so, you know, it's a it's a traffic, no bike lane lights and pedestrians and cars and trucks and you know it's just it feels dangerous and the other thing is that i notice more on my bicycle than i do in the car is the roads uh, the potholes mm -hmm. and and the frost heaps and 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 i was happy to see in here that i believe it says something to the effect that the the road maintenance has been capitalized so that there's a plan yes. for the road maintenance and i and i was delighted to see that because that's just critical um i i have a lot of repairs to my car as also which are costly that are because of the number of thumps and bumps that it has to to travel um what was the other thing I was? Oh, I have a friend from the southern part of the state who comes up, um, I don't know, occasionally, and uh, she has an all electric vehicle. And sometimes she has trouble finding a place to charge up fast um, because, uh, you know, we may be having a meal or we may be going for a bike ride, but she doesn't have eight hours to charge. And um, that's sometime because she can get here and about halfway home, but she can't get all the way home um, uh, without charging her car. Um, so the charging is an issue, although I don't personally have a, an electric vehicle. Was there something else? Well, I live up that steep hill. I, I guess uh, this is a little tongue in cheek, but maybe a lift to get me up that hill. <laughs> 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 the older I get, the more challenging it gets to walk up first every state, you know, really. Yeah, get that get a really <laughs> get a really good e-bike. Uh, yeah, I have one. <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh that's fine. It's walking that's the problem. Oh, the walking yeah. up the hill, yes. Um, so uh, uh I will comment that we do have a plan for getting um a, a faster charger. I don't know whether it's a level three charger, which are the bet really good ones, but there's going to be one that's going in um, near where the drawing board is. Um, in back, there's a new parking lot where there used to be the M&M beverage and there used to be, um, well, there's a parking lot in back now and they're going to be putting in um, supposedly a faster charger. GM, a GMP is supposed to be putting in a, a charger now. Well, don't don't know if it'll always be available, but mm. there will be at least a faster charger that's out there, and it'll be the first one. So we'll keep hopefully getting more and more fast chargers. Um, some of the issues we have are actually surprisingly we don't have a lot of we don't we don't have a lot of electricity in the downtown, which has actually kind of surprised me when um, I learned that you need to have um, three phase power, and we don't actually have a lot of it because we didn't have a lot of industrial downtown. We had a commercial downtown, so we didn't bring in a lot of commercial power. 
or industrial power into our downtown. So we've had a number of cases where we don't have power where you'd expect. And that's what they need for the superchargers is more of the three phase power. So uh, we will get one there because that line that goes across there goes down Barry Street and then kind of cuts across is mm. does have enough power. So that's why it's over there and not near the police station or the fire station or in one of our parking lots is because it's just, there's no power out that way yet. Now I didn't see any mention of this with regard to the sidewalks. Oh, it must be 20 years ago. Now they tore up my street. I think they were placing, were replacing water and sewer lines <laughs> Um, and uh, took out the sidewalks, which were concrete, and replaced them with, what is that, uh, asphalt. Just the yes. asphalt. Replaced yeah. them with asphalt, and they're just awful. Yeah, I don't any, know. Any any plans to give us that goes a little bit to the that goes a little bit to the um to that to that map that I said that was in there on the complete streets. So, um. We need to look at two things when we look at any street. One is, does it have all the pieces it's supposed to? And then the second question is, is it of the right quality to, you know, it doesn't do you any good to have to have a sidewalk if it's so bumpy and uneven that somebody in a wheelchair can't use it or somebody can't safely walk on it. Um, so it may have a sidewalk, but it's not of the right quality. And then the question is, when are they going to be back to up, upgrade it? Um, it, some, in some cases it was a cost issue that they just, it was, it was cheaper at the time to put in the asphalt rather than repouring concrete. Concrete lasts longer, but it costs more at the start. So, um, I, it was, people have done things in the past. We have a new, um, department, department of public works folks. A lot of them are relatively new and are starting to kind of build things out in these new plans to try to make sure that we're thinking and planning and building for the long term, not in the short term, to make sure that we're making good long term fixes. Um, I, I just would like to know how to make sure that my little orphan one block street doesn't get forgotten. <laughs> that. Yeah, we would have to we would have to connect you up with the public works folks to go and find out exactly what the schedule is and, and what the plan is for your street. Like we said, some streets may not um, require a sidewalk. It's the question is whether if yours is a short dead end street, it might not have a it's side. It's not dead end. It's not dead end. Okay, then it probably would have a sidewalk. Lots of walkers. Ah. Nope, then it probably would require a sidewalk. And the question is, when when would that be upgraded and what would it be upgraded to? Would it be upgraded back to a concrete sidewalk or is it going to remain an asphalt sidewalk? Um, asphalt sidewalks need to be replaced more often, but um, that, that would be a question that we would have to ask Public Works for the specifics. Um, so let me jump real quick. Oh, yes. Um, please say more about the relationship between the plan the zoning and the capital improvement program. Okay. So and maybe this isn't a bad time to jump into how everything kind of works together. Or I can it can wait. I just would like you to address that some. No, nope, that it's so the the plan is supposed to be laying out for for everybody and the community, you know, what is our aspiration? What's our goals? What are we trying to do? It doesn't have any regulatory impact. It doesn't, it's just, it's a guiding document that helps us make our decisions and what we're going to do. Um, we then look at, so aspirations and goals, which we just talked about, and we had five goals and the, the one aspiration, and then all the strategies this is how we're going to accomplish those goals. So this is where, in some cases, we may look to have additional plans. Um, there was a conversation, and it is a conversation. We just finished that east-west shared use path. It's basically a, a bicycle and pedestrian highway that lets you go east to west. But we don't have a bicycle highway that lets you go north to south. So we need a plan for where that would be. So in some cases, this plan is gonna talk about, we need to do additional studies, additional planning, um, if we're going to accomplish our goals. Um, in some cases, we're talking about 
the Complete Streets initiative um, because we had that map, we have that design. How do we get that implemented? Um, and we have a capital improvement plan. Um, that's one of the tools for us to do it. We have to continue to fund it. And the, this, what people sometimes will call the CIP, capital improvement plan, this is really where the budget meets the, the, the target. So we're going to come in and say, we've got $1.5 million for paving roads and for fixing sidewalks. We've got $3 million in need. Which ones are we going to do first for this year? And that's what's in what that's what's in the CIP is, okay, we'll do this one this year. We'll do this one next year. We'll do that one that year. And of course, as years go by, other roads get worse and we add them in because we need to, to, to continually have this capital improvement plan. The problem the city had for a number of years, uh, I got here in 2014 and the plan there was to go through and say, we are so underfunding our CIP that our roads are falling apart and they're getting worse. We, you know, we, we just can't pave the road fast enough because we don't have enough money. So they increased every year. We added another $150,000 until we got up to a new capital improvement level. That's why the taxes went up, get more money so we can have enough money to be able to pave the streets and fix the sidewalks and do those improvements that we need to do. So that's a lot of times when you're talking in the budgets in the fall, this is a good time to, to you know, talk to your your counselors about making sure your your street and your project is in the CIP. Um, but there are a lot of things in here. Um, so these are all different things. Each one is kind of has a different thing that it does, but they're each a discrete thing. So renew tax increment financing. So this is tax increment financing is a way to pay for new roads. So if we're building a new road in the country club road, we could, or or fixing, you know, if there's a project that's going to require fixing a road, we can fix that road um, using tax increment financing, and then we don't have to raise taxes. So this is just talking about all the different tools that we have or could get to help us achieve our goals. Um, sometimes we need to plan. Sometimes we're looking at a program like tax increment financing. Um, we talked about the CIP. Uh, renew the program to annually fund the GMT. So this year was the first year we didn't fund. For many years, we've funded and paid extra money to Green Mountain Transit to provide public transit that we wouldn't otherwise have gotten. This was the first year because of budget cuts that it was voted to remove that. And there's a lot of people who are interested in making sure that comes back. So we've put it in the plan to renew that program to start refunding it again um, because it's necessary for folks who can't afford to have their own cars. Uh, it's an important, now there's still, there will still be GMT, but we had extra because we paid GMT extra. And so people want to get that extra back. Um, continue the designated downtown program. That's just a program through the state. So each one of these is just a different thing. And we try to put a description into each. I should probably go through that. You'll see some of these say renew, some of these say continue. If it says continue, it means this is something we already do. You have amend the downtown streetscape master plan. Um, we have a downtown streetscape master plan, but we need to go through and, and take a look at it again. And this talks about it. So this says, what is the initiative? What is the tool? This is a description of the tool. And then what's the priority? This is a medium priority. It's a high cost. Um, it helps to implement these three goals. And if you went up top, you could see which three goals, one, two, and three, and who's responsible. Public Works is responsible. And these are all going to be printed out in poster form. So, um, and this is a second page of things, create a parking initiative. So this is to, to, to go back to studying the parking and managing the parking to 85% occupancy. It's we really had to shift a lot because of parking. We had parking problems and we didn't have parking problems and we have parking problems and we don't have parking problems depending on COVID and not COVID and then flooding and not flooding. So we're, we're really trying to figure out what's going on to manage our parking more efficiently. Um, policy to support shared mobility, uh, engineering and design initiatives, um, 
integrated transportation. So this is try to make sure that people have, um, people don't just drive, people don't just walk, people don't just bike. Sometimes people are gonna take a bike to the bus stop and be able to, so we've gotta make sure that either we have bike racks near our bus stops or that the buses can accommodate bikes. Um, and so that's what making sure we have integrated transportation planning. And yep. That reminds me. Um, Make sure you grab it the microphone. seems to me, I have heard, you correct me if I have mis misinformation, that um, the transit center in its design somehow missed accommodating for the height of the buses. So that the buses, the Greyhound buses, the big buses, don't fit under the turnaround. So you have to wait across the street in the rain for the bus to Boston. It wasn't a mistake. It was known at the time it was built and it had to do with the circulation. The buses actually couldn't make the circulating turn through there because the buses were too big. The, the lot is surprisingly narrow. Um, so it became very difficult for a bus to actually make all the turning radius. So they intentionally designed to have a bus pull off on each side of Taylor Street. Um, so that way, a bus that comes onto the bridge in one direction or coming on the other direction would be able to pull off if it's a, if it's a big bus, if it's a long bus. It's the length of the bus that was the issue, uh. not the height of the bus, but once you couldn't fit the big buses, they didn't have to worry about making the building. They could have easily just cut more dirt out to, to make it lower, to make the, to make the buses fit under it actually has more to do with the length of the buses, not being able to make the turn, but they knew that at the start that, um, they weren't going to be able to, to make the buses have the, have enough of a swing to make it all. So um, I just, oh, oh go okay. ahead, Maria. You go ahead. Oh, I was just going to loop back to Zoe and say, did you feel like Mike answered your question about the relation of those three things, the zoning, the city plan, and the... I didn't hear anything about the zoning, and I don't, I, I'd love to hear about all the pieces that need to fit together. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And so the, the third piece is actually right here, the, the last piece, and I guess actually on that, that screen, it's kind of covered a little bit. Um, so uh, the, the last piece is the amend and continue the unified development regulations. So we do talk about how does the zoning tie in? And it's like we said, it's partially covered on your screen. Um, so I can't make that change on, on mine. Um, but it says zoning regulations are probably the most well-known set of zone of local regulations and are used to protect and promote the health, safety, and welfare of the community regarding transportation they regulate location and specifications for driveways, design and layout of new roads, requirements for bike and pedestrian facilities, as well as parking and loading standards. Traffic is a key consideration in conditional use review and for new subdivisions. There is a consideration to remove off-street parking requirements for neighborhoods within walking distance of the downtown. Oh, there you go. Good job. Thank you, Carlton. Um, so there's, uh, kind of a discussion in this one and the zoning appears in a lot of the chapters, but in this case, it does discuss how, how does zoning impact and, and, uh, affect transportation. So we will affect any project that has it. Um, but in some cases it won't repave your street or fix your sidewalk, but it will affect it. If we're looking at a new development project where somebody wants to build a new building or bring in a new use. Um, is there enough room for the tractor trailer trucks to do deliveries? Those types of things we can look at. Um, I, I apologize, but I don't know. So would when would the zoning be updated and would you anticipate the zoning updates when they come to be reflective of the master plan or does that, would they stay, how, how would they be interconnected? Good question. Um, so we update the zoning about once a year. So we'll go through and it's a separate process from this. And what we try to do, and that's why this one, um, 
misspelled, but it says amend and continue the Unified Development Regulations Zoning Bylaw. So we identify that there are some things we want to change in here. This is what we've identified. Um, there is a consideration to remove on-street parking requirements for neighborhoods within walking distance of the downtown. So we have one recommendation to change our zoning in, in, our, mass, in our city plan. So in our city plan, we should make that there's a recommendation to change our zoning. We may change other things. And if there are other things you think we should be considering fixing or amending in our zoning, we can add those to this list as well. Um, and then when we have update the zoning, we would go through and make a note that says this was in our plan. And we've made this recommendation in the past to remove parking requirements just because we make the recommendation in the, in the, in the city plan doesn't mean city council is obliged to do it. We've recommended, this has been in our planning documents for a while, and we've recommended a number of times and it's been voted down a number of times, but it continues to be here as a recommendation. Um, so, I mean, is it accurate to say that the, right, like you were saying, Zoe, the city plan is meant to envision the changes that we would make in the zoning and also perhaps affect the changes made in the capital improvement program, although that would be more the city council, right? Funding that and managing that. Does that, does that make sense, Mike? Am I? Yeah, every, I, everything comes back to the city council at some point, whether it's yeah. uh, adopting a policy, changing the zoning, uh, implementing, you know, raising taxes and, and funding the capital improvement program, what goes in the capital improvement program, it'll all eventually come back to the city council. But this is supposed to lay out what we all want as our vision, and then the city council will adopt this plan. And hopefully that that leads them to go through and consider it's like, well, if we if if this is our goal, um, then we're gonna have to do X, Y, and Z to accomplish our goal. Or it's not a goal. And if that's the decision, that's fine too. We can stop trying to accomplish it. <laughs> If it's if if we're not going to try to accomplish it, then we should probably just go and recognize the fact it's not really a goal if we're not going to try to do anything about it. So um, those are the conversations that council and the counselors will have. Yeah. So I, oh, oh. Just, oh, no, you go ahead. Oh, make sure you try to use this. <laughs> we could scroll up to the goals and see if we could get public comment on what our goals are currently. Okay. Try not to give, make place. everybody seasick here. We'll go back yeah. to the top. So um, these were the, give it just one click, see if it'll go. All right. Well, that's the aspirations, um, which we talked about. Meet the needs through safety, efficiency, attractiveness, quality. And then the goals, we have these five goals. Um, increased public transit and shared mobility opportunities and access through inter integrated multimodal transportation. Um, and I think we had talked about these other ones, improving the system, improving the appearance, um, balancing the quality and cost effectiveness and improving the transportation infrastructure. So. Yes. And so I also want to know, can you see if anyone. Yeah. If, if any, yeah. If anyone wants on, I won't be able to see anyone who's waving their hands. Uh, you'll have to make sure you hit the raise hand function and then you'll pop up on my screen. Okay, but I want to make clear, everyone, that these goals are, we can edit them. So feel free to weigh in. So on the last one, I think number five, improve the transportation infrastructure to mitigate stormwater emissions, heat islands, et cetera. Um, uh, it just lists roads and sidewalks, and I think parking lots are a big piece of that. Mm -hmm. Also yep. relevant to... Um, uh, Flood uh, amelioration. Good recommendation. Yeah, build on that. <laughs> yes. I don't think we can fully and adequately and efficiently address flood management without collaborating with our surrounding partners and watershed um going up the watershed as well yeah I, I didn't i don't this all sounds good i just didn't i don't think i heard including through collaboration with appropriate other partners but it, it, that's under a different isn't that under a different 
There will be that resilient Topic. chapter. Isn't that under a different chapter? Resilience will be its own chapter, but yeah. sometimes things, if they're keys, then then we can address them in more than one places. If there's a key factor that kind of goes in and, and we can decide whether do we want to save this just for talking about resilience or do we want to include it here and in resilience at the same time? Um, you know we I'd could like talk to about it. I what I said. I think for transportation, if we need to work with surrounding municipalities and in addition for the resilience of our transportation, we need to work up watershed and down watershed. So transportation overall cannot be just within Montpelier. Yeah, just last week, you couldn't get to Worcester or Elmore, you couldn't get to, to um, you couldn't get to uh, Waitsfield, you couldn't get to Plainfield, you, yeah. You couldn't get to Middlesex. And I might think about adding into these, getting to your to your point, and actually Donna Bates on on the Zoom as well. Um, we don't have as one of our our strategies down here our participation um, in uh, the the RPC, the Regional Planning Commission TAC, the Transportation Advisory Committee. And that's where a lot of these coordinations come in is working with the TAC and, and Don has been our representative for for as long as I've been here with the city. So um, we really should have that as a tool and highlight that as one of our, our strategies is to, is to continue to participate in the TAC. I wish to ask, speak in support of that. I, I don't think there would be, it seems to me, consistent and sensible to include it both places under transportation and under resilience. With different focus for each. That's why there's the uh, the synergy portion. Mm -hmm. I'm just taking some notes. All right. So we think we're set here. I'll just, I can jump to energy and we can try to just go through these other ones. We can talk about any of them for as long as we would like, but the next. You know, see, you brought up a really interesting question. You know, if you look at the 511 map, you only see the state roads. Is there a possibility of having a map that includes the dirt road closures and washout? The 511 can, it's just up to the communities to make sure they report them to the state. If the, it, so if they're, yeah, if it's not washed out, if the, if the local town doesn't report it, then it doesn't end up on the map. That we just have to. I really didn't see any of the dirt road washouts on the map. So it's very reporting. That. Yeah, there's just not very many that get reported. You'll occasionally see it's one, but not very often. Specifically limited to the state roads, to the paved roads. I'm not a hundred percent, so you might be right. Because I, I was, I've, for us, I've, I live out in Hardwick. Right now, I still live in Hardwick. I'm moving to, to town, but right now, so it's always hard to get from Hardwick in after these floods and these events because a lot of times I'm forced to take back roads because I know the state roads closed. So now I got to take a back road, but I have no idea if the back road's actually mm -hmm. there or not there. So I think the League of Cities and Towns may also be involved in that matter. So I'll just jump. Real quick to a related topic. We kind of chose these three because they were all very related. Energy, utilities and facilities, and transportation. They're all very much related. Um, so I'll go qu much quicker through this one because we've already kind of talked about what each one talks about. Um, so in energy, um, the, the topic here is to create cleaner, more sustainable energy for the future. The transformation of Montpelier's energy infrastructure and use over the next 30 years positions the city to be greater stewards of the natural environment and more resilient in the face of changing climate. 
Um, so both locally and globally, these changes, if enacted, will better ensure Montpelier residents of a tomorrow will enjoy that the residents of tomorrow will enjoy the same quality of life as today. Um, so we talk a lot about the impacts. Um, we talk, have show a number of examples and same as last time we go to the mapping portion and it starts to show us the information. Um, this is where roof mounted solar is located. The bigger the, the wheel, the bigger the solar, again, all of these you can move through and, and find them, zoom in and zoom out. Um, ground mounted solar locations. Our biggest one is up on log road. That's the city um, leases that one. We help build that. Um, and we've had some comments from uh, folks who are very familiar with the energy. They want some of these updated. They want some of these to have uh, cite the data because sometimes people will say, well, mine isn't on there. So we don't know if it's just because this is showing a 2019 map and they built theirs in 2020. So we want, we're going to try to make sure we have citations in here. Um, those are some of the comments we've received from other folks. Biomass is the heating with wood. So of course we have our downtown municipal one that the, the one that's uh, across from the, or uh, behind the DMV is probably the easiest way. It's by the railroad tracks. That's um, the big smokestack is a, uh, that's from the wood fired plant that the, uh, that heats the capital complex and the city purchases some of that. Your question earlier, uh, where are all the electric charging stations? Well, this map actually will show you where all the electric charging stations are and which which levels they are. Um, level one, level two, and the DC fast charger. So actually at the, um, it appears that near um, VSECU, the credit union at the corner of Bailey and um, Memorial Drive, there's a there's a fast charger. And we will be adding another one up here by the uh, bike path. So this is what we're trying to do is be able to give people resources, let them know, you know, it, it's it's all about the information. These are the, the big goals the city has. By 2030, we want 100% of the energy used for municipal government to be renewable. And by 2050, we want to have the entire city um, be off of fossil fuels. So those are the, the big goals that MIAC has, the Montpelier Energy Action. Yes. I see a big absence. There's nothing there about ground source geothermal, um, which is way cleaner than the, than, uh, the wood fire thing. Um, and uh, I know there's at least one other besides mine in the city, um, but it's um, quite amenable to multiple user systems. And there's a there's a group. Oh gosh, I'm sorry, I came without the information. Oh, Is that's it fine. Two fifty Vermont or Vermont two fifty or three fifty or something like that. They put on a, a, a little seminar at the Universalist Church um, within the past week. I can't remember the woman's name. Oh, so sorry. No, nope, that's that's fine. I think it, I think it's I think it's three fifty. But I I can look it up and see what it is. It's about. But they're focusing on trying to get people to move towards the the ground source heat pumps and the yes. geothermal. Uh, and I have such a system in my home in Montpelier. Oh, good. And, and I think there's one out Elm Street as well. All right. That is one that would be worth adding. Uh, really see if we've like got the, see if we've got the data data set in the recommendation. She did suggest that some of the existing um, infrastructure for the wood fired thing might be convertible. Uh, to distribution of um, the fluids, the heat, whatever, uh, 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 that would be associated with that type of system. Yep. That, that might be tricky because it's a, that would be a requirement. We lease heat from the state. 
So it's the state's system. State so, system. So we we use excess, the excess capacity from the heat. We help to pay for them to expand and upgrade their, their plant. And then we purchase heat, Just which is wood. I understand wood. It, that there are not enough clients for that system, that it's over engineered for the number of takers. We're, it's it's talked about in here. It's also talked about in the utilities section as well to kind of get into the fact that we need more customers and there's a plan for bringing more customers on. It's kind of a catch-22. If we get enough customers, because we have to buy all the heat and only some people are using it, the few people have to buy all the heat. Um, so if we can get more people on, it doesn't cost us more. It just brings down the cost for everybody else because there's more users of the same so, amount of so heat. So I, I can't envision a, a, a certain amount of um, philosophical or intellectual conflict between the concept of fully using that system versus developing a new system that's differently based in terms of the source of energy? I have heard, so not contradicting you, for the downtown, it might be trickier to make a conversion because all those pipes would have to go under our existing streets. But we have heard, you know, the Country Club Road project, that's a new housing development that's being proposed that um, could have between 300 and 500 housing units, and it's going to be up in that area, and it's going to have recreation facilities. And um, it has been discussed to have that type of ground source heat system to be a utility out there. Well, I I don't. Sense. They haven't. They haven't done the small, super studies. Yeah. Start small as a kind of a demonstration project, if you will, but to demonstrate the feasibility. And and I envision, well, what about the Murray Hill development? That sounds lovely. What about uh, the Vermont College uh, area, the campus, which is being uh, purchased by an engineering school? Um, those seem like sensible, smaller ways to start rather than trying to talk the city into doing something big. Yep. But it's worth, you're, you're right. It's worth talking about. It wasn't mentioned. Yep. It wasn't mentioned in this as, as one of the options and, and it should be. And it I'm, should be. So um, we'll get that added into our, our conversation and see if we've got those mapped locations. I don't know if we've got them, but if we do, we should be able to highlight them. Um, then we have the the group net metering projects. These are all these are all the electrical group net metering sites. Um, so basically, they purchased solar power, and they they might not have the solar at their facility, but they may be purchasing it directly from another area. And then there, we go. Is there mention of it? Are there are there um, solar facilities that you can? I don't know what the word is buy into or be part of or a, a, a cooperative thing uh, for example it's not feasible on my roof I, I i imagine I, there probably is um it probably if you contacted somebody on the energy committee they would probably be able to tell you very specifically who to call um to make that connection it's probably a, a green mountain power um connection um person to connect with it, but they can certainly help out um, so some of the accomplishments, we talk about the, um, all the energy efficiency work that was done at the water plant and the water recovery facility, our sewer plant. These are some of the biggest electric users, and we were able to do a lot of, um, successful work to get them much more efficient. Um, again, we talk about synergies, energy relates to a lot of issues, transportation, housing, natural resources, utilities and facilities, historic resources, lots of things. We could probably add in more. And that's what this chapter section talks about are those synergies. Um, we're going to be going through, I'm not going to read through the aspirations and goals because we actually got a lot of recommendations from the energy committee to go through and say, these are a little bit dated. Um, in 2021, we adopted a new energy plan through MEAC, and we want to have these get changed to reflect that new energy plan. Um, so we're working on making these get updated who's involved, we've got MEAC um, is our key player here. So like we said, a lot of this chapter is to let people understand if 
somebody is new to Montpelier and wants to understand what are we doing? What's our climate goals? What are, what, what are we doing? You could read through this and have a good idea of what's going on involving energy. Who's, who's involved in, um, again, if you want to provide feedback, this was supposed to be updated. I was told it was updated today and it's not, maybe it got updated and it didn't get loaded onto the website. Maybe that's the trick. Um, I'll have to check on that. And similar to transportation, um, our energy plan is laid out here. And I'm again, for the same reason that I just mentioned, they've gone through the energy committee has sent me a, a whole bunch of recommended changes to go through. Um, we had the goal to be net zero by 2030 for the municipality and 2050 for community wide. That's the aspiration. How are we going to do it? We had eight different goals because really we have to talk about electricity. Got to talk about thermal, you know, uh, using electricity, uh, heating your houses and heating water, and then you've got transportation, and then you've got municipal for all three, and then you've got um, the public for all three, and then you also have energy efficiency as another goal. So that's why all three, that's why each one ended up with eight different goals is because we had to address, you know, vehicle vehicles for the city as well as vehicles for the public, because how we what we need to do to get our vehicles in for the city um, takes different strategies. So again, similar to the other one, lots of different things, including probably in here, there's going to be some zoning regulations, um, but these are all going to change. So I'm not going to spend, we could certainly go through them all, but we've gotten recommendations from the chair that we want to make a bunch of updates, but I will answer any questions on those as well. Um, if people want, and then I can jump over to utilities and facilities. Do we have any energy, additional energy questions? All right. So I'm just going to jump in last one and then everything's open. We can talk about all of them. Oh, actually I jumped into the, um, this one's a little bit backwards. So I opened, I didn't open the storyboard. I opened the the strategies Utilities and facilities is laid out a little bit different. Um, so we have aspirations and goals for group A. So these are the this is the aspirations for the public utilities, water, wastewater, stormwater, and district heat. And the aspiration being will provide quality service for their customers, achieve a steady state plan for maintenance of the plants and systems, and accomplish all at a rate affordable to their customers while keeping their respective enterprise funds healthy. So everybody has kind of the same aspiration. They're all, if you're not aware, um, your water, your wastewater, and your district heat all are paid separate from your property taxes. So they have their own enterprise funds. They have their own budgets, and uh, they operate independently from the general fund. So they've your water lines and sewer lines are all being maintained using that money. So they all have different plans. Um, so we've got a set for public utilities. We have a set for public facilities. What are we going to do about our municipal buildings, our senior center, our parking lots, our rec fields, our cemeteries, our parks? Those are all municipal facilities. Um, we have aspirations and goals for private utilities. We are required to have that. That's why it's in the plan. Um, and so private utilities are electricity, communications, telecommunications, um, and so really for those, we would just want to make sure that they're universally accessible, uh, universally available um, and where appropriate meet net zero objectives. And then last, the last group are non-municipal facilities. So um, our schools technically are not now, are now not municipal facilities, although schools are their own municipalities, which is weird. But for this plan, they're non-municipal facilities, as well as libraries, hospitals, uh, waste management. Those are all things we have to talk about in a city plan for it to be valid. So we have goals and aspirations about how we associate with them as well, including we continue to participate in the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District to aid that organization in planning programs to extend the life of the current landfill. Um, so, and then on this page, we have all the strategies that relate back so it's, this one had to get laid out a little different because 
with so many different pieces, we had to kind of group them a little bit differently. So, and then the one I was supposed to hit, again, and I'll be pretty quick with this, utilities and facilities, not the most exciting, but it is very informative talking about our utilities. What are we going to do with them? Um, here's the map of the water resources. Those are all the water lines. The water filtration plant is up in Berlin, in case you didn't know that. Our wastewater system, our sewer plant is down by the interstate. And these are all, again, just like everything else, we have all of the mapped information here. And it won't let me move, but should be letting me move. We've got the stormwater management system. So those are so our public works department knows a lot about what is underground. And these are the actual maps of where everything is underground. Um, and they continue to map them and make these more uh, better and better. So when floods happen, we can go and review and make sure things are, you know, if something didn't work, they can go back and look and go through and say, well, why didn't that work? Maybe, maybe a line isn't big enough. Maybe something got plugged. They can go through and review these things. We had a big conversation about district heat. These are the actual district heat lines. They go up Elm street, down Langdon street, up over to city hall, Bethany church, up to school street, goes to the library. Um, so we do need to expand it to connect to a few other places, but that's who's already on at this point. Electric transmission. We've got all that information. So again, it's just a wealth of information. What we do with it um, is up to us. This is our facilities map. So it shows us, you can zoom in and see where the various pieces are. Maybe you're not familiar with the city. You'd like to find out where things are. Um, and again, the ability to zoom around. And this is just a, a thing at the end. You could go through and click on any one of these to turn on and off a specific layer. Synergies, how does utilities and facilities relate to other things? Did you know, we do like to have these. We're trying to throw one, at least one of these into every single chapter. Um, so did you know that the Montpelier water treatment plant provides 1.7 million gallons of water per day to 3,100 customers in Montpelier and Berlin. So. Is there any solution to the high pressure problem? Uh, the, so they, if you talk to the public works folks, they don't think it is a problem. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not paying to the, replace my water, my pressure reduction valve every couple of years either. Uh, so there, yes, we do. We do have the the pressure reducing valves that are that are necessary. Um, the so the two options are in order to get the water up the hills because we've got this low part in the city and we've got all these high places. In order to have the water reach the highest points, it's got to get to pressure. If we did a big pressure reducing valve before it got to the city, we would need to put pumping stations all over the place to pump the water up to your house because we wouldn't have the pressure. So for public works, they're very happy leaving it with the high pressure and managing it. The issue we have is we've got a lot of old lines that need to get upgraded and we've got plans to upgrade them. So uh, the issue isn't the pressure. The issue is the old lines. Um, and then well, the last time the thing blew out, it exploded my hot water tank and flooded my basement to three feet high. And I don't know if they have some suggestions for for how to what what else to do. Maybe there's a different plumbing thing. Maybe they maybe there needs to have a redundant system where there's two of them. I I don't know. I'm not I'm not a plumber. Uh, Public Works would have to help you with with um, possible solutions to help. Um. So again, we've got our aspirations. We just my went through solution is my plumber lives two blocks away. <laughs> Knowing how to turn the water off to your house and then calling oh, yeah, your plumber. Can I just say thank you? This is all very informative and interesting, yes. and I, I will read it in more detail. I just need to go. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for taking time to come out and give us your ideas. Email Mike with any further comments. Is there a deadline by which you want comments at this point for this stage of the work? 
it's really going to be open until this fall. And as we said, we'll be going through other chapters. This is, we've gotten six of them out. Um, and we'll be going through the next three, probably, probably in September. We probably aren't going to get to them in August, I would think, because we're going to take, take a little bit of time off in August. Uh, we'll be back for the next three in September. And then, um, the next three after that in October. So even in October, you can still ask us questions and make recommendations to any of these that are up here as well. All right, thanks. Thank you for coming out. Thanks. All right, so I'm going to, unless somebody is going to tell me otherwise, I can jump out of the share screen. And we can open it up. Oh, so is Aaron's hand up? No, I think you're. Doing oh, that's work. that's the uh, that's on that screen in there. Okay. No, I was just I was like I didn't have any hands up on my screen. So yeah, if there's any other comments, if Adana or Doug or Alan um, have any comments, we're still can keep things open. Um, for more input. Otherwise, we'll wrap up the public input and then we'll go into back to our conversations of the uh, reviewing the changes, which is really a follow-up of all the input input we're getting right now, we are putting into a document. So all, all of your comments you gave us, we'll, we'll put into a, a document and I can actually show it just so people know what we're actually talking about. Uh, this one, maybe this guy. So what you see here, I'll try not to move so fast that I make everybody seasick. Um, so as people have been giving us comments and we have 70 comments right now, these are all about historic housing and arts and culture is somebody will make a comment. We'll summarize it. We don't put the whole comment in there. We just summarize it. I will go back and make a staff recommendation or give some in comments into it. And then the planning commission will review that and make a decision on it. And that's, so we want people to know your input we take seriously. We will review it. Doesn't mean we'll agree with you and do it, but we will take the time to consider it. Um, somebody made a comment that we should not use TIFF as a tool. Um, I talked about the value of it and how powerful a tool it is. Planning commission decided to leave it in. That's a that's a um, an example of one where where somebody made a comment, we reviewed it, we considered it, and we didn't make the change. And then there are a lot of others in here where um, this should be a higher priority. Staff agrees um, we should be making that a higher priority. So in this case, green ones mean we've already finished it, we've closed it out. And sometimes some cases, it's we should make this change. I already made the change. We agreed. It's all done. The yellow ones mean I have to go back and make some additional changes. So there's been a comment, agreed to review and identify locations and add language. So this was about emergency housing. Um, we should have more conversation about emergency housing in the housing chapter. That should be added. Everybody agreed. We should review and identify locations and add that language. So I've got some work to do. These are all yellow things. I've got work to do. Orange is an area I've got work to do, but all the green ones are ones that we've wrapped up. So this is what the planning commission is doing now that public input piece is over. We're kind of going through step-by-step step to review what people have recommended, making some changes and deciding what our, our changes are going to be. So people are um, wondering what we do with all of the comments that people make. This is, this is what we do with it. And we've got, as I mentioned, an awful lot of comments to go through. <laughs> <laughs> this is 32. I won't scroll all the way down to 70, but we'll be adding your comments to the bottom. And then we're going to start going through them. And then by the time we get done in hopefully November or December, we've incorporated all those comments. We've made all those changes and we've got a new revised plan that's ready for public hearing. Um, and the one thing I want to make sure I get down, I did not get your name so I can make sure I've got that noted down. Your Susan. Yep. Labara. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Um, 
So we've got all your comments and none of these comments have names on them. We just put the comments in here, but for um, if somebody were to ask me who, who, who mentioned this, uh, who's, who made that recommendation? Actually, most of the time, most of the time people just, uh, they, the, especially my coworkers and stuff, they're, they are truly interested in knowing, you know, if there's, if there's a problem area, they want to actually go out and say, and sometimes they'll say, Oh yeah, we know about that one. And this is why we haven't fixed it yet because perhaps, <laughs> no, sometimes it's because we got to go out and fix this. We, you know, we got to put in a new water line over here. And so we don't want to tear that up and fix it because we got to go and fix that water line first. And that's why we haven't fixed it yet. So um, they've got, sometimes they got reason. Sometimes it's just hasn't gotten there yet. And sometimes it's like, Oh, I didn't even know that was a problem. I'll send somebody out to take a look. Um, so I appreciate that. Do we want to, yeah, maybe just let's just make a little space of a few minutes to make sure that nobody on the Zoom wants to raise their hands. Yeah, I've got I've got the full box if open, so I can I can see it on mine. So okay, so nobody's raising their hands. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that's been helpful for everybody. We had Donna Bate, Doug. You briefly mentioned resilience. Where does that fit in all of this? So we talked about the the three chapters, whole chapters that we're doing. We're actually going to have another chapter, a whole chapter that's going to be called resilience. Okay. And it's going to have yeah, its own storyboard. It's coming up in the future. I haven't written it yet because we hadn't planned on doing it until we got flooded. And then, and then we were preparing to have this public input starting last summer. And then we had the flood. So everything kind of got delayed and we, we waited. And then once we started up, people started saying, you know, we really should have a resilience chapter. And so we're like, all right, you know, we wrote this, most of this before the flood and hadn't really planned on having it. Um, Donna, you should, should be able to unmute yourself. No. All right. Hold on. Uh, does it, oh. I think, can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful information. Uh, it, it is an issue when people don't say their name, no matter how many different times they talk, when they start another section, it helps to know who's talking. Uh, and that's one of the things about a hybrid model, particularly that's difficult, but such good information. And I like your board system. It's just terrific. I do just have to emphasize again and again that I hope all the departments will pay a lot of attention to these goals because they should be coming guidelines for each of the related departments and for the budget. Uh, they're just really awesome. A couple corrections, or just actually one correction, and that's a new name for the Transportation Committee, Mike, and you may or may not have been told that uh, MTIC is now just the Transportation Advisory Committee, TAC. So Montpelier has a TAC. Oh. The, the Transportation Advisory Committee is more the standard in our region. And I appreciate you mentioning the Regional Planning Commission TAC that I'm on, uh, and it's tremendous in lots of ways of knowing what's going on, but also sharing regionally resources. The little we get from the state is very important. Um, but uh, the other thing is that within the water pressure, I just have to add just a little bit. I'm not sure if that person is still uh, in the room, but it's more than just DPW says that it's not high water pressure due to the breakage on the road. It's a, it's a study that the state had the city do with an engineer or consultant. And the state agreed with the results of that study, that indeed it was the pipes that were too small that needed to be replaced and not the water pressure. And in the house, it is, you do have to replace your water pressure, but it shouldn't be more than really like 10 years. So if she's replacing them every two, I would really talk to maybe a different plumber. Uh, but that's really sad if that's true where she's at. And, and there may, may be something she can do, whether it is a double uh, pressure reducer or just a different model. Uh, it is a problem and people aren't used to it. You know, it's like your water 
hot water heater needs to be replaced every 10 to 15 years. And it's a mess when you miss, miss those signs and they bust. And I do sympathize greatly because we had a major leak in my condo building affecting 16 units. So uh, I'm sorry to hear her problems, but I just had to sort of add about the study. No. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Donna. So do we want to jump to reviewing the next set? Yes, I'll just say my preferences. Um, I don't know. I'm fine. I feel like I didn't bring my laptop. <laughs> so just with this hybrid meeting, I feel like I'm going to have, I won't be to review the matrix now might be a little bit hard for me and it's seven o'clock. So I wonder That's about cool. how the other commissioners feel about just doing that at the end of August. Um, I think we are going to have a meeting or we were planning to have a meeting the fourth Monday of August. Um, skipping that second one, but. Okay. Yeah, that's, that would be fine. Okay. Hearing any strong. <laughs> okay. Um, but I think we do have some minutes to consider. I don't know, Mike, if I maybe can. you could put those up if you don't mind. Mm. Uh, if you have, that's possible. <laughs> if not, we can do that at the next meeting. I can just have to give me a minute to. All right, so minutes of July 8th. I think she was trying to highlight who was there at the meeting. Oh, yeah, oh okay. I was so, not there, so I'm yeah. not yeah. yeah, she. Yeah, I think she keeps everybody's name and then goes through and highlights them. So I'll just have to, I'll remove Brian and then <laughs> and then uh, take out the, the highlights. And Kate was there, Rob Goodwin. And Kirby Keaton and uh, Doug Zorzi. So I have to add Doug's last name into the minutes. So it's spinned up. People need to read through it. So I, I noticed that the discussion in the public input session isn't recorded here. Is that consistent with our other uh, notes? I think there was a pretty long discussion about definitely energy uh, resiliency versus Mitigation. Yeah, all of all of the comments that we were just talking about with um, we have to make all these changes to the energy chapter. Kate yeah. went through a, a long list of changes that she thought would improve um, the document, and I've got I've got some notes on that. Rob made a comment. Kirby made a comment. So yeah, maybe I can go through and fill some of that out, and then maybe we can improve this. But I I in, did. Yeah, but just because I feel like there was in the previous minutes, um, you didn't um, want to name names, right? You know, maybe that was it. Maybe that was it. It was yes. the names, not the topics. Okay, I'm just wondering if the other minutes did include at least an overview of the discussion. Right. Yeah, I, I think there was some. There were certainly some comments, but there wasn't wasn't a lot. Okay. But yeah, and I in the public input that was given will is represented in the matrix maybe you said that already right okay. yeah it is right. it will be in the matrix and and also so legally the only thing is required in minutes are actions that are taken who's present um and those types of things okay. the, the other piece we have is all of our meetings are recorded so right if anybody wants to know what people said there's you can actually watch the video of it 
Yeah, I think we kind of kept it simple. Keep from getting into the weeds and on the minutes. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's consistent. So if someone's looking at these minutes, they're like, oh, I guess there must have been no one there to comment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would probably be helpful to have, have, it says Mike gave an overview of the meeting items. We could probably add in, and I could type it in right here, that, that people, there was public input provided. Yes, yeah. Does anyone want to move approval of the minutes? I'll move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, so just before we adjourn, um, so we'll have the meeting on, I don't have the date in front of me, like August 26th, um, or we can, uh, talk about the matrix and then will we have enough time to prepare for a meeting in September? Do we want to aim to have like that first meeting in September be the, uh, the next be another three public input chapters and are we poised to do that if we, <laughs> or do we need to yeah. do anything before the, okay. We're okay. good. We're good for the next three. It's the, okay. it's the last three that I have to actually prepare two more chapters for. We never did write the land use chapter and I have to write a new resilience chapter. So those okay. are the two that, so October is when I've got to okay. really get going. But we'll have enough time to find a bit. Thank you. Uh, find a venue and prepare all the. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and, okay. we're, and we're still going to keep trying to do some Saturdays. It's gotten a little bit challenging to do the farmer's market. Evelyn has been my partner in crime to do these. Um, and she was, her, her home was heavily damaged by the flood. She lived in Middlesex and was really, so she kind of got taken out for a little bit. So we're hoping that she'll get back settled in and we'll be able to get back to doing some more farmers markets. Yeah, she when I did it with her, she also said the farmers market was maybe asking to charge the city. We reached out to them oh, to okay. clarify and have that that sorted out and okay. and we've got that all all settled. So that that aspect has been fixed. Um now we just need to kind of get back to some time and I might have some time to be able to do a little bit of that. He said I'm going to be moving, so that's why we're Part of the reason we're missing the first meeting in August is I'm taking two weeks off to move. So. Great. Good luck. So yeah, good luck. Luck, Mike. it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> so um, hey, before, well, before um, we go, do we want to like re revisit that in those minutes we were talking about going back to doing some in-person meetings like has anybody had a chance to think about it like how i assume it would be hybrid like this one um and like how so this is how we used to have planning commission meetings way back way back before <laughs> that before, COVID. before covid and before uh -huh. other things we used to we used to meet in person and sometimes we would just sit around the table sometimes we would meet around here but it it Provides an easier opportunity for for public input and with uh, uh, Orca to be able to record and be able to to have meetings. So we could certainly go back to having this as the norm and just if people want to keep coming in, um, I can go and order up everybody their nameplates. I haven't updated nameplates in so long because it hasn't seemed necessary, but we can get everybody back their nameplates and we can be. Um, meeting back in person and we'd still have the hybrid option for anybody who can't make it in they would have the opportunity to well, i think Ariane and i were discussing maybe like one meeting a month is in person and the other one or hybrid and then the other is over Zoom. Totally remote. yeah we always have to be hybrid at least because city hall is currently still not um ada accessible so we yeah. have to okay. we have to at least be hybrid if we're meeting in per in person 
Uh, but we can either be fully remote or hybrid would be our two options. How do you, how do you feel about that? Uh, I'm not working. <laughs> I think, no, I, I, yeah. when we started, you know, that would, it's nice to see people in person. There's some members of the commission we hadn't set eyes on. So I think that's great. And keeping it, so the physical, you would, you would staff it out of here one, one meeting a month. And we can come here in person or still do, I mean, gives everyone still the same options. So I think it's great. Yeah. How about, is Aaron still here? Yeah, I'm here. Yes. <laughs> That's it. No, we, we got an unmute. Speaking. <laughs> what? Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, there we go. Oh. Hi. Hear you. <laughs> do, do you have any comments on that, Aaron? Oh, maybe Mike's. Oh, I'm doing doing a hybrid once a month. Or do it, yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. I'm in favor. Okay. Hey. Okay. Right. So yeah, I'll try to plan for that. And yeah, in the past, when we were even when we were doing the room the remote during COVID, I used to still set up in here and set up a computer. Um, and then it was three years and nobody ever came, but it would give the option for somebody, if somebody in the public wanted to come, they, they would have that option. If they didn't have a computer, um, they could be able to come here because it was set up to have, uh, but nobody ever came. So that was- We built a one yeah, <laughs> and we had two this time, so that was great. Um, yeah, I guess that reminds me, Carlton. I don't know if this is your last meeting, but I just wanted to say thanks for your participation while you were with the commission. And um, yeah, I I don't know if you're going to come to the August meeting or when exactly that process is. <laughs> what? Okay. Well, I'm not sure when. When does it like? I, I want to do the, the, the August first, you know, because that's you know the flood is. It, you know, this was it. This is this is the. Can I speak to the camera real quick? Uh, you quick yeah, speak like, to the microphone. I want to be like I I I just I want to really just say thank you for this opportunity to be on here. It's changed um, since the last time, but Mike was a constant. Um, also. Um, uh, what was the last president's name? I forget the gentleman. Kirby. Kirby was awesome in explaining a lot of things. Um, and I, I I appreciate just just everybody on here. So just thank you for the opportunity, Montpelier. I'm still around. Um, just got to do it a different way. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Keep sending us thoughts. You know, we're still here. We're still looking for input, and you still have ideas. So. Okay, great. Does anyone make want to make a move to adjourn? I'll second. Got it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Everyone have a great night. Thank you.